All right, so greetings, fellow runners. It's been a while since the last video. Today, I wanna to take you through my marathon buildup. I'm uh, doing my first marathon in November. I wanna show you guys my plan, types of workouts that I'm doing, why I'm doing them, uh, mostly just an overview of the planned training uh, over the next few weeks, and also what I have been doing for the last few weeks. <music> So as you've probably noticed, I haven't posted that many videos lately. That is because I have been working on my new coaching business for runners all over the world, but also here locally in Norway. So if you're interested in online running coaching, customized training programs, anything like that, you should head over to my website. I'll uh, put a link to it here. There's also a link in the description where you can buy a training program or schedule a consultation with me, anything like that. Go over there and check it out. And please do let me know in the comments of this video what you think about the website. I'm pretty happy about it. I built it all myself. Got some help from a friend in uh, Nice, France with the pictures. And I think the result is really awesome. Anyways, let's jump right in to start talking about my training. So first of all, let's take a look here. Uh, so here, unfortunately, a lot of it is it's sort of like a mix of English and Norwegian language in this plan, but I'll explain. So here's my plan, uh, basically. Uh, this one started back in week 23, so that would be the 3rd to the 9th of July. So what I did was before that, I was sort of just building up my volume, uh, you know, getting up to 100 kilometers per week. Uh, at least for one of those weeks, I, if I remember correctly, and sort of just laying the foundation before I really started a more uh, focused training plan. If we take a quick look here in Strava, we can see that my training has been pretty consistent lately, pretty good. You know, this was my uh, race back in May, uh, the half marathon, took a rest week, then started building it 60, 70, 90k per week, 100k per week in June. Um, you know, some long runs, etc. Back down a little bit and then up again 95, 100. As you can see here, just generally, it's consistent, right? There's a lot of running, not that much. You know, here's a few breaks, probably because of small injuries. I've had, you know, a few niggles here and there throughout the, this. Uh, last few weeks, but it's been all right. I've been able to get pretty consistent training, done some epic marathon um, sessions like this one. Today was awesome, 31K long run on the road. Progressive effort from 520 per kilometer down to 420 per kilometer. Of course, my goal, I'm not gonna get into that today too much, but I'm dreaming of going sub three, right? I wanna go 259 on the marathon, um, possibly three, 305, 310 is probably more realistic, maybe, I don't know. We'll see as the months go by or as the weeks go by actually because we're getting closer and closer. But anyway, uh, of course you can follow me on Strava, there's a link in the description of this video to see all these details. Uh, anyway, continuing fairly consistent, 97. This was last week, 82, but some quality sessions though, you know, the yellow stuff is workouts and I did sort of like a race almost last Sunday it was a time trial very hard effort um, so pretty consistent and this is where we're at today uh, this week all right so back to the training plan so with that being said so we're actually now in August right so we are in the tw where are we here this week 33 week 33 that's where we're at right now so we're actually sort of halfway through this plan and we're entering into the most important part of the build-up. So let's take a look at the plan from the beginning and not really think too much about um, where we are at the moment and just talk about the plan in general. Of course, you got to remember with training plans that they are always evolving. Okay, so this actually is my August revision plan. And then I had another one in July and June so I make the plan before I start to build up and then I pretty much modify it and adjust it here and there 
as I go along. Possibly, you know, every three to four weeks I go over the plan again. I might change a little bit here and there. And it's really, you know, a plan needs to be evolving because your fitness is unpredictable. Sometimes you progress faster, sometimes slower. Sometimes you get an injury, you get a setback. Sometimes you, you know, you, you learn things during the build-up so that you want to add in elements, etc. So it's, it's, it's really a matter of being flexible with your plan. So this is an outline. You know, there's never been an athlete in the history of mankind, probably. <laughs> well, probably has been a few, but very seldom does a training plan happen the way it's planned out. Okay, so training typically happens differently than what you plan, but whatever. Let's start here with uh, the first few weeks is base training, and then we go here, we got a race build-up. And those are the two main macro cycles, base training and race specific build-up. Within those, there are some meso cycles. First, a uh, volume and introductory phase, that's what I called it, just getting up to that 100k volume. Then a speed and preparatory phase, you know, adding in a little bit of faster paced running, a uh, little bit of intervals and getting a little bit more familiar with the marathon pace. And then we get into the phase that I'm in now that I've just started really, the fundamental capacity type phase where we're talking about ex really just laying down that foundation uh, quite specific to the marathon. So doing a lot of marathon pace running, doing a lot of long runs, doing a lot of fast long runs at marathon pace and sort of building that capacity. Uh, and finally, we get into the final phase, which is final quality race prep, you know, really, really dialing in the specificity for the marathon before the taper. All right, so uh, the races, you know, here's the race, Nis, uh, on November the 3rd, that's the marathon, and then I have a tune-up race, sort of like, a, it, it's actually more of a workout, also half marathon on the 21st of September, where I'm going to just run the half marathon at marathon pace. Uh, similar kind of thing a few weeks before that and then this week I have a short little um, six and a half K local just fun run uh, on Sunday so a few races uh, mostly or all of them are just workouts really not real races because I'm putting you know I want to get everything perfectly ready for this race which is my marathon race in Nice France so um, I'm not going to go through all the details here, but there's a lot of sort of talk here and there about uh, my VDOT, uh, which is my pseudo VO2 max. It's, it's a concept that the Jack Daniels developed, coach Jack Daniels. Um, it's basically a performance score, you could say, uh, so that you can use to sort of estimate your training paces and predict your marathon times or whatever race that you're doing, actually. And so I went through some weight loss in the beginning. So these first few weeks uh, here in the base phase were uh, uh, also at a calorie deficit. So I lost four kilos and now I'm back at maintenance calories. And that was good because that means I was also getting faster just because I was shedding fat. And so these are just my personal notes at how much I should increase my VDOT per cycle and you know what my VDOT would be at certain points and currently now we're in August and so my current VDOT should be something like 53 or 54 which gives me a marathon pace of about 418 down to 415 of course 416 per kilometer is sub 3 marathon pace or three hour marathon pace so i want to be at that <clears throat> high end of my predicted v dot um, but it's difficult to say if that's actually accurate or not so i use those numbers to guide me as to what sort of range i should be in in terms of my different paces but then at the end of the day it's really about the feel you know i go out and i do a workout and i see how does it feel at this pace is this pace sustainable um, that sort of thing now, here we got the long run. Here's the weekly kilometers, okay? This is the total kilometrage. 80, 90, 100, 60, 90, 100, 80, 100, right? I'm topping out at 100K, and I have a few periods here where I'm doing 100K, or just one time that I'm doing it 200K weeks in a row, and that's here. 
in the final phase i'm doing 200k a week back to back other than that i'll do i'm doing 80 90 and 100 alternating a little bit with recovery weeks in between you know next week is going to be a recover well actually this week is a recovery week and i have a race at the end of the week <clears throat> and then uh, here's my long run so obviously if you want to look at the details you can pause this video and analyze away but um Here's my uh, long run, so different distances there. And either it says, like here for example, it says 22E, that means 22K, easy. Here it says 34E plus, that means like 34K, easy, but not really easy. Just like pushing it a little bit, but still easy. And then here's like 30M, which basically means 30K um, long run with a substantial amount of marathon pace in there and then how much of it will be marathon pace well that depends on the workout itself which is something that i plan on a weekly basis so i'll actually each week at the beginning on monday i'll sit down and i'll make my weekly calendar here and then i'll plan out the workouts uh, based on what i've done before what feels most appropriate and i'll sort of play, play around with different types of workouts etc but here's the you know it's supposed to be a marathon long run that day and here there's the details for the sessions with the different letters referring to marathon pace threshold interval uh, repetition these are jack daniels running formula type uh, abbreviations so if you don't know about those abbreviations you can just uh, well i suggest you read jack daniels running formula um, it's a good book. Anyway, I'll put a link to it in the description and an affiliate link to Amazon, so you can buy it if you wish. But yeah, I, th I don't think I'm gonna go through all these details. That's a little bit too much for this video, but needless to say, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing repetition work, I'm doing marathon pace, I'm doing thresholds and strides, I'm doing uh, long runs at marathon pace, I'm doing easy long runs. And I'm mixing it up from week to week. Um, and I'm typically focusing on two workouts per week. So, you know, this week, for example, we're doing marathon pace plus a long, easy run. Tuesday, Saturday, right? Next week, threshold and then marathon pace. Wednesday, Saturday. So I sort of, I do two main quality sessions a week and the rest of it is more or less easy mileage. If I'm feeling good and I'm, you know, I'm not recovering from the day before, I might, you know, start running slightly harder than easy, um, but still holding back in order to make sure that I can finish the important workouts when they come, um, whether that be the next day or the day after that. So um, training is really a, a matter of balancing training and recovery. It sounds so basic and obvious, but it's really a lot of people make the mistake of sort of racing in training um, and doing too many hard sessions not really focusing enough on recovery so you know after a hard session the next day you should take it really easy for some people it would mean complete rest for others maybe going for a run is a good idea but it needs to be like really really easy so i just have two quality sessions and i make sure that i'm really recovered for them and able to execute them with uh, top-notch quality um yeah some more you know details here just like questions should i go longer on the long run this long run this week is 32 m so that means 32 k with some marathon pace in there we're we're just like one two three four weeks out from the marathon 32 k maybe that's enough that's a 20 miler essentially should i go longer should i go 35 k just you know just a little question for myself i'll see when i get there perhaps i will go longer on that particular run we'll see thinking about doing a vo2 max lactate test in the lab perhaps i don't know when i would do it but perhaps i will and then the rest of this is just as i said talking about you know my different um you know v dot stuff and just it's basically just notes or comments for myself so that is the training plan in a nutshell just generally progressing through the mileage uh, getting comfortable at 100k per week which is the peak mileage for this build up um, working on those long runs really focusing on the long runs that's really key in a marathon build up long runs are you know they're the most important workout you do 
and particularly as you get closer to the marathon the hard long runs right the long runs where you're actually practicing running at a pace close to or even at your marathon pace uh, is very th those workouts are very important um, you know a marathon is a very long distance so you're not gonna you know you're not gonna run a marathon in in training at marathon pace that would be like racing a marathon so you save that for race day and what you want to do in training then is to a simulate the time and the sort of duration time on feet uh, fatigue that you experience in marathon by going for a long time um, at a slower pace and then the closer you get to the marathon you want to be able to run for longer and longer at your goal marathon pace so at the same time you're sort of both working the duration but at an easier pace and also working at marathon pace but a shorter duration and then as you get closer to the marathon those sort of meet in the middle and you start extending your ability to stay at marathon pace for longer and the the easy long runs that go for duration they, bec they become less important as you come closer to the the race itself anyway that was a little bit of a spiel i guess on uh periodization which is a topic in and of itself but um i'm happy about the build-up so far um it's been a lot of fun i really love marathon training so far it's really cool i'm heading in now to the important part which is from here and down so how many weeks do we have here we have one oh, well one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 so 11 weeks out from the marathon and uh, yeah i think for the next few weeks the the focus of course according to the plan and according to my own predictions is that uh, i'm going to focus more on the long marathon pace runs i'm going to do more long runs in general i'm going to hit a 34k long run pretty soon which is going to be the longest run i've ever done will i hit the 35k long run at one point perhaps it's a good idea to do so i think However, I need to balance the risk with the benefits because it is pretty far for me at this point. So you don't want to overcook yourself. And so it's a balancing act. Throwing in some recovery weeks in there just for, for um, well, for obvious reasons. And having fun with some races along the way. So when I built the plan, of course, I started with my, you know, my marathon race date and I worked backwards from there adding in the taper adding in the most important sort of final phases first and then sort of building it from there and in terms of knowing what workouts to do each week like should i do a marathon paced run here or should i do a easy long run or should i do a threshold session like how do i know where to put those sessions i'm working on what i would consider a two-week cycle really here where there's like two week cycles this plan is a little bit messy because i've revised it a few times so it's not perfectly lined up with the two week cycles but as you can see here the idea is that there's like two week cycles and within that two week cycle i'm definitely having typically an easy long run one week followed by a marathon paced long run the next week and i'm also touching on another type of energy system for example it could be threshold it could be interval training as a vo2 max session or whatever um and trying to spread it out as evenly as possible so the most important workouts like the marathon pace long runs etc they go in first and i spread them out so that i'm not missing a few weeks without a marathon pace run you know i mean like i want to be able to at least every 14 days hit that sort of give my body a stimulus like that and then i down prioritize things like interval like vo2 max intervals because they're less specific to the marathon but i still want to keep them in there perhaps every four weeks or so um, and touching on threshold also ideally around every every two weeks ideally perhaps every three weeks sometimes is also something that i do so as you can see here marathon if you just look for the m's which is marathon pace i'm doing marathon marathon no marathon then marathon no marathon no marathon no marathon marathon so most weeks or at least every other week i'm touching on marathon pace if you're looking at the t letter 
that's threshold so i'm touching on threshold there again next week then a week off threshold then back at threshold there threshold no threshold no threshold, no threshold, and then, so that's a few weeks there without any threshold, but I'm doing a race, which is gonna be fairly stimulating to the lactate threshold regardless. So, you know, you need to really think about a lot of things. It takes, probably took me about 10, 12, 15, well, 10 hours, I would say, to build this plan, because it's not, it looks like it's just like, just everything is just put in there, but you actually have to sort of think of, okay, uh, when was the last threshold session? When is the next one? When should I fit in another one? Oh no, that's too close to a marathon session. And how far long has it been since I did a an easy long run? I should throw one of those in here. And you want to balance all these things together. And that's one of the challenges of making a training plan. But it's it's a lot of fun for sure. If you like this video, of course, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and if you like uh, my plan, and if you're thinking perhaps you would like to try a marathon as well, or maybe a shorter distance, 5K, 10K, maybe you're a beginner or an intermediate, doesn't matter. Remember that I do now offer customized training programs, okay, on my website, the link is in the description. So basically that means that we'll have a talk on Skype and I'll be building your training plan based on our talk to fit exactly your needs, your starting point, your goals, and we'll sort of get you to train optimal for whatever you want to achieve. So I think training plans are important because they give you structure. And I also think it's really important to have a personalized custom training plan rather than just a generic one because there are so many individual differences to consider. And that's what I wish to do and watch, that's what I wish to offer uh, with my uh, new coaching business, MGJ Coaching. So you can go to mgjcoaching.com and learn more about that. And in the meantime, leave a comment if you like this video. Let me know what you think about my build up. Give it a thumbs up if you like the video. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching. Wish me good luck for the marathon. I will be back soon with more videos, I promise. Uh, see you around.